Happy Friday. Appreciate you being with us. No shortage of news this morning. We have so much to discuss today, and I'm really looking forward to hearing from both of you. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith. I'm Molly Karam. How are you? Hi, Good. guys. Good morning. Hello. Good. Good morning. Back in the house like I told you I would be. You are. Thank God. And I'm happy you are because we have so much to get into. So let's work. So last night, Des Bryant went off on ESPN reporter John Jock Taylor for a story he wrote on Des and the Cowboys. Here's what went down when Jason Witten was being interviewed by reporters. He's just a true pro. I mean, I think for a lot of us, we didn't really know until we've seen how much of a workload he's got in the last couple of weeks. He uh, had to, you know, how well he's ran the ball, you know. And, um, Brother, don't single me out like that. Now, go report something. Report it right. You all right? All right? Report it right. Now, go report that. Been going on for a while. Yeah. That's the talking about right there. Yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. But I, I think he's ran the ball really, really well. What you just said about yeah. me wasn't accurate. One second, excuse me. It's not exactly what I just said. So get it right. Yeah, you just did. Let's just drop it. How about y'all fix this? How about you fix it, Rich? You talking to us, you talking to the wrong people. You talking to the wrong people. Well, I'll make sure I put it out there. Since y'all not going to say nothing. I'm going to make sure y'all call street. I'm going to post that on Twitter. And then I'm going to let them know why, is, why I do this. Why I do this. I'm going to let it be known why I do it. All right, so Des tweeted the words, take it however you want with this note last night. Now, I guess I'm the bad person. The media comes into our locker room with no restrictions. I guess they can say whatever, and it's cool. Let me remind all of you, we are humans as well, with families. We have to live with a lot of false talk about us. I chose to stand up for me and what I represent. I'm so sorry if a lot of you can't handle being talked to direct. Skip, do you have a problem with Dez's outburst? Stephen A., unfortunately, I do. I, I was so disappointed yesterday in a Dez Bryant for which I have so much hope. As a leader of this team, as a guy who I think can reemerge as the best receiver in pro football, as a guy who I think can become one of the great personalities in the history of this game, one of the biggest stars in the National Football League, including all the quarterbacks. But he completely overreacted yesterday that some, about several things that be, should be so beneath his dignity. And I want to be clear about this. I have sympathy for why he got so upset. I, I get it, obviously. Let's, let's put this in the proper context. This whole season has been a building nightmare of frustration for Des Bryant, because we all know, after he got his money, 70 million bucks, injured in the first game, I thought he rushed back prematurely off a serious foot injury. He hasn't been able to push off 100% on his right foot, so he hasn't been himself. Six straight cowboy losses. But if Des Bryant's going to become the player, the leader, the star that I think he can be, his skin's got to become much, much thicker than this. He has to start tuning out what's written about him. He has to quit reading what people are saying about him on Twitter and completely overreacting to that. He has to quit letting his emotions run completely amok with him over things that don't really count, especially when his, his team is facing a last gasp, maybe pull it out of your backsides win at Tampa Bay to save what's left of the season for Tony Romo to return the next week. There's only one way, Des, to shut up your critics. Just go make plays. It's as simple as that. You're, you're picking a fight with reporters that ultimately you cannot win. And look, I know Jean-Jacques Taylor. Do you know Jean-Jacques yes, Jean a little bit? I, yeah, a I've little known bit. him for a, a long little, time. A little bit. And he's a fine reporter and a very good writer. And I respect his job. I, I thought he was a little rough on Des. A, slightly unfair on Des and what he wrote last week after Des's first game back, the Seattle game. Mm -hmm. 
and, and I get why Des would be somewhat upset with it, because John Jock talked about his lack of production, how he's making excuses for his lack of production after the Seattle game, and obviously Richard Sherman had his way. Mm -hmm. Des had two catches for 12 yards, and, and Des said, no, no, look at the tape, look at the tape. Okay, I get all that. And John Jock concluded in that piece of a week ago, the Cowboys can't afford another quote-unquote empty, per I'm using the word, italicizing the word, empty performance from their $70 million man against the Eagles. Okay. Okay, that's, that's a little harsh to me. It's just like you're asking a lot of a guy who missed a lot of training camp holding out for his contract, and then he goes down in game one, and he's not healthy yet. Okay, that's fine. I still respect Jean Jacques, but so what? Go take it out on Tampa Bay. And so what if another reporter in the locker room then tweets out, Des just threw a fit. He just went off on a tirade. And Des, I don't know how, but he's looking at his phone too much and he sees that this guy, or somebody sends him the tweet, this guy has tweeted that he just went on a tirade in the locker room. And he goes off on that guy. Well, you don't need to. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't count anymore. You need to be a leader, be a playmaker. You just need to grow up and take this team over. And that was a big step back yesterday for Des Bryant. Hmm. It's really upsetting that we had to start the show off with this. We needed to. I know that. Um, but it's hard for me because I'm going to go there. As a black man, I was embarrassed. Let me just say it. I was. Because when you see what they're going through and when you see a guy like Jason Witten and other guys somehow, some way, able to maintain their composure, but you have a brother in Des Bryant who is big time, who is a guy that I rave about at every turn because I think he's a stud and when healthy he might be you know, he's easily one of the top five receivers in all of sure. football. He's come a long way. He's overcome a lot of adversity. You put yourself in this situation where you're making a scene. And first of all, I have to ask for what really? Because a reporter said something that you didn't like, wrote something that you didn't like, tweeted nope. something that you didn't like. Mm -hmm. Did he talk about your mama? Did he talk about your family? He did not. I mean, what, what did he do? What, what, what did he do exactly that warrants that? Then you're talking about a guy in Jean-Jacques Taylor who we both have incredible respect sure. for as a reporter who's been covering the Dallas Cowboys for years, who knows what he's talking about, who talks to a lot of people and has a lot of resources within the Dallas Cowboys organization. And I can assure Des Bryant that whatever Jean-Jacques Taylor wrote isn't anything compared to what he could say because people chirp, mm -hmm. particularly in professional sports. There's always somebody that's talking about you and then some other guy tweets something and you're looking at your Twitter account and you see that and then you go off on him and you're cursing and you know, all, and one of the guys was accused of uh, spewing a racial epithet, if I remember correctly, and it was denied. Jean-Jacques Jean was. Jean-Jacques. Yeah. Jean-Jacques was. To Devon Street. Right, to Devon Street. got involved in this and, discussion. And, and it's been categorically denied. By, Nobody, by others who by overheard. Others who in yes. the vicinity, they mm -hmm. said they didn't hear such a yes. thing. So, okay, so you've been for, now you falsely accused the reporter of something that heinous. So we go there. And I just, you know, when I look at situations like this, Skip Bayless, it's like I am sick and tired of some of us being viewed as lacking self-control. You know, I mean, yeah, we get loud and we get bombastic. I mean, who the hell am I to say anything about that? Because we know how I can go off, but I can assure you it's calculated. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know why I'm doing it. And it's not a lack of self-control that has me doing it. And that's really what's alarming about these guys. And you know what I say to Des Bryant and others, when you, when you go off and then after that, you want to spew about how you tweet out your own information. Well, does that apply to everything or just what you want to say? Because there are plenty of times where we'd love to see a tweet. You understand? If you get yourself in trouble, are we going to hear you see you tweeting about it then? If you get in trouble with the organization, are you going to be tweeting about it then? I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And I just look at it from the perspective that, you know, I, I get tired of, and it's certainly not all, because by and large, most 
professional athletes are very professional. Sure. They're good guys. They're very professional about their business. They're decent and good human beings. And sometimes a lot of them and Des Bryant on occasion has gotten a bad rap. Very, very undeserving rap. But that's why you're getting 70 million, because you're supposed to be a big enough boy to deal with those instances. And when we see this level of belligerence, this lack of self-control, it's damning, not just to him, but what folks out there and what a lot of these young brothers, I'm going to sit there and say black dudes, what they don't realize is that whether the industry itself will admit it or not, whether corporate America will admit it or not, when they see a few acting that way, sometimes it taints the many and precautionary measures are exercised and all of a sudden you find yourself in a situation where you're saying, here, we don't want to give you this. We don't want to make this kind of investment because we have our concerns and we want to make sure. Think about Des Bryant and the problem that he had during his negotiations when he went with Rock Nation. It was Jay-Z and Juan Perez and the crew that had to step in, talking to Jerry Jones, talking to Stephen Jones. What happened? What transpired with all of that? It's very, very simple. You said it yourself, you reported it. Jerry Jones and them had their concerns that if we give you this money, are you going to know how to act yep. at no time? Did they express any reservation about Des Bryant's abilities on the football field? Oh. Their concern about the monetary commitment and investment that they were going to make specifically involved his behavior and what kind of impediment was that going to be to the degree of the team's success and his individual success? Let's, let's, let's pause for a moment and think about that. A billionaire is willing to invest tens of millions of dollars in you. But what causes him to pause is not your ability, it's your self-control. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. I don't know if anybody really in, in appreciates- your off the field incidents. Uh, uh, well, off the, well we, uh, it's all the same. It's all jumbled in together. Think about how damning that is. Skip Bayless, you know what? We got, we got concerns about giving you this money because we don't know how you're going to act when you leave ESPN. Stephen A., we got concerns about you getting your money because we don't know how you're going to act when you leave ESPN. We know how you're going. We know you're going to come to work and do your job. Mm -hmm. We don't know how you're going to act. Yep. I don't know if anybody takes a moment to really realize and appreciate how damning that reality is. But it is a, it is a reality, unfortunately, that some of these guys deserved. And even with that little incident, Des Bryant proved it yesterday. Because why are people having to, to restrain you mm -hmm. and calm you down? Because somebody said something? That's all it takes? It's really sad. Mm. It's it just is sad. really sad. It's just sad. Quick thought on what we have done for a living for many, many years, and yeah. that's cover professional and college athletes in locker rooms. Yeah. I covered that locker room for a long, long time. I had my share of battles in that locker room mm -hmm. with ex-Dallas Cowboys, now ex-Dallas Cowboys, starting with Charles yep. Haley. Yep. Lots of big knockdown, drag out battles. Here's what I found. This is my two cents of advice for Des Bryant. If you do have an issue with the reporter, don't try to take it out on him in front of your teammates because it will never go well. You'll never get anything solved. If you really want to talk it through with that reporter, meet him outside the locker room where you're not on stage in front of the rest of your teammates mm -hmm. trying to show your teammates you're not going to let this little reporter get away with this. You're going to you're going to steamroll him in front of his in front of the teammates. Mm -hmm. Go, go elsewhere, go one-on-one, -on -one. go sit down somewhere quietly and talk it out with him because that can be actually productive, well, dare I say. Well, this was not productive. Well, not right only out. that, but let me go someplace else, a couple of places. Number one, when I had my now infamous situation with Kevin Durant, one of the things that ticked me off is that there is no NBA player that can't find me with inside mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Every, and inside every locker room in the NBA is somebody who has my cell phone number. I'm not hard to find. You got a problem? Pick up the phone and call me. Tell me to meet you at a game. I'll be there. Sure. I'll show up. Okay, that's number one. Number two, it's something that is going to make the world uncomfortable, but there isn't an African-American reporter that would disagree. I will be applauded for what I'm about to say. 
we are held at a different standard. You are. I got by African American athletes. Mm-hmm. African American athletes, and I point to Mike Tyson himself and what he said in a spectacular interview conducted. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, by I'm sorry, I got brain lock here. Jer- Jeremy Shap. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here at ESPN. Yep. He was interviewing Mike Tyson one time years ago, Skip. And he was asking Mike Tyson, if I recall correctly, about the volatility with which he approaches certain people at times and why that is outside of the ring. And Mike Tyson was lamenting how disgusted he is to certain reporters. And then he talked about somebody black. And he said, I can let it pass with you. But a black dude, he should know better. So in other words, he was saying that the black reporter that comes up to him should identify more with his history, his past, relate more to his transgressions and be a bit more understanding in reporting the facts. Is that fair? That's, that Well, to some degree it is because you should be reporting, but reporting while highlighting the level of sensitivity it involves because you have an understanding somebody white, somebody of some different ethnicity may not have because of the relationship culturally that you may have. But nevertheless, it can't skate over the facts. Now you can use it to accentuate the facts, but the facts are what they are. And that's what reporting is. And when you're reporting and you're telling a story, that's what you have to do first and foremost. And everything that follows, follows. Mm -hmm. The problem is we have a lot of black athletes that look at black reporters and hold us to a different standard Mm -hmm. because they expect us to spew and disseminate and present a different perspective than the rest of you. And I don't disagree with it totally. I do believe that when you're giving opinion, when you're giving commentary and analysis, you should provide that. But when you're reporting the facts, they are what they are. If you came late to practice 85 times, that's what you did. If you got in a fight with somebody, that's what you did. If the coach is complaining about you or the GM is complaining about you, that is what it is. If your numbers are what they are and you're not productive, that's what it is. There's no way around that. But when it, I'm telling you right now, you got black athletes out there that'll look at Skip Bayless and they're more cool with you than they are with me because they want me to soft soak, never realizing that if I don't do my job, I won't have a job and I won't be over here debating with you, mm-hmm. even on their behalf most of the time. I would be without of a job, I would out a job, but they're not sensitive to that because they don't care because they surround themselves with people who don't care. You think that operated with Jean-Jacques Taylor? I think to some degree it does, because I think that if that, I didn't see Des going at any white reporters like that. I didn't see that. I'm not saying he wouldn't, don't get me wrong, but I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that. So I'm just telling you that as a black reporter, as a reporter who happens to be black, I noticed how you went at Jean-Jacques and the other dude and the other I, 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 I didn't see you going, uh, not, not to say that he would, anybody would deserve it, mm-hmm. but I didn't see them going at an Ed Word or anybody like no. that. I, I, the, I just noticed. The, other, the young reporter for Monday Morning Quarterback who tweeted out about the tirade that really set Dez off at the end, yes. also I bl- uh, named Robert Klemko, I That's his right. name is, is also black. I, I don't know. I'm just saying I didn't, I'm just telling you what I didn't see. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I, didn't, I didn't see that. That's not an accident to me. Okay. It's not an accident to African Americans who happen to be reporters in this industry. Yep. We kind of know that we're held to a different standard. So this belief that because we're black, we find a way to ingratiate ourselves with athletes and we got the end. I got news for you. That ain't the case. Yep. Look at some of these marquee athletes and look at who they talk to. This, I'm just saying. This is call it what it is. I'm fine. But there's a lot of young brothers in this business that ain't fine because they're held to a different and a higher standard sure. by African-American athletes who don't want to appreciate the responsibility that they have. And it's a damn shame. Mm-hmm. Yep. Tremendous insight, guys, and well said. And former Cowboy Darren Woodson will join us later. We'll get his take on this subject. I'm interested to hear what he has to say as well. But let's go on the field now. 